بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والأفات وتقضينا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها علة أعلى درجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغيات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير آمين يا رب العالمين وبعد Before we begin we just make the request please again for the brothers to come forward inshallah let us pull the masjid from the front This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is the etiquette of the day of Jumu'ah when we come to the masjid from the way or rather from the methodology that was taught to us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is appropriate on the day of Jumu'ah and it is necessary that we pull the masjid from the front. When we come to the masjid, we must sit as close to the khatib, the imam, as possible. That is where the most reward lies. In this month of Ramadan, it is also something that we would like to capitalize on, is the maximum reward that we can get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us come forward, inshallah. We know some brothers are fasting. We are all fasting, inshallah. <laughs> so, uh, those that are obviously struggling, uh, maybe with age, maybe with uh, something else, those brothers that are leaning against the pillars or the walls, we understand, may Allah make it easy for one and all. But if you are young and able, please come forward and fill the masjid from the front. It will assist us also when it comes to standing up for the salah, the fard salah, that we can fill the masjid with the gaps, rather uh, form the sufuf faster. Because there seems to be some type of a delay always where we have to wait for everybody to fill the gaps. And this is stemming from this mistake that we are making, that we are not practicing on this sunnah of filling the masjid from the front when we walk in. When people come into the masjid, if they see everybody sitting in front, inshallah they will come and fill the masjid from the front. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all forms of praise because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy and deserving of praise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his choices, blessings and mercies on our beloved master and guide, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his pure and chaste wives, his noble and beloved companions, and all those who follow in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the day of Qiyamah, Abid ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an al-Kareem, بعد عود الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات صدق الله العظيم and there is a very very beautiful hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم where the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has stated من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم The verse that I have recited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse that O oh you who have been given iman O oh people of iman O oh you who have iman fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those before you لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you can develop a consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you can develop a fear for the disappointment of your Rabb. You can develop a fear of disappointing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as such, you will strive to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you can develop a fear for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you abstain from the prohibitions. So that you may develop desire for the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for his obedient servants. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. Amen. Amen. A very, very important component of this verse. This is the objective of the fasting in the month of Ramadan. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qama Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban. The individual, specifically here, man qama in, in, in ibadah, he stands in prayer, referring to the salatu taraweeh, referring to the faraid, referring to the qiyamu layl. You are standing in salah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do this, not only with your salah, but you do this with your fasting, 
You do this with other acts of worship. Imanan wahtisaban. Firmly believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having conviction in your Rabb. Having conviction in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahtisaban. And having conviction and desire and hope for the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you. Your sins will be wiped out. Whatever sins you have committed, they will be wiped out. Predominantly when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about sins in the hadith and sins being forgiven, it generally refers to the minor sins. These are sins that will also be forgiven when a servant comes to the masjid. When you make wudu, you wash your limbs. The sins that you've committed with your hands will fall. Allah will forgive your sins when you make your ablution. When you wash your face, the sins that you may have committed with your eyes and your ears. Allah forbid the sins that you may have committed with your mouth also consuming haram, a haram uh, whether it is in the form of actual food or money that you have earned in, a, in an in, impermissible way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Amen. But these sins are forgiven, minor sins, etc. When you come and you put your head down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sins will fall from your back. Like leaves fall from it from a from a tree in autumn. When the branch is shaken and the trees, the leaves fall from that branch. That is how your sins fall off your body when you come and pray. So generally speaks about the minor sins that a person may have committed. The kabair, the major sins that the slave may have committed. Now obviously I gave the example of the riba, I'm just trying to give context. Major sins we all understand. Aklu riba, uqukul walidain, disobeying your parents, breaking family ties, consuming haram, uh, etc. Zina, may Allah save us, may Allah save our youth. Amen. These kind of things require sincere tawbah from the servant. So even though a person may find himself in the month of Ramadan, there are many servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forbid, Allah forbid and may Allah protect us. There are many servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that find themselves in the month of Ramadan and they do not desist from these sins. They do not desist from the kaba'id, the, the major sins. So these individuals are in big trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and save us. May Allah guide those that are in, in error. So like this, we have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins. One third of the month of Ramadan has passed. One third is gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to capitalize on what remains. <laughs> the days of mercy, as they say, the first third of the month of Ramadan is the portion of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not mean that there is no mercy in the portion that we are in now. This is not what it means. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's quality of mercy is accentuated in those portions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still remains arhamur rahimin. So like this, if you find yourself in that position where you are in the month of Ramadan and you have not yet been able to rid yourself of sin, you still have a chance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets free people from the fire of Jahannam every single night in Ramadan. And on the last night of Ramadan, the equivalent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed throughout the entire night, throughout the entire month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets them free on the last day. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People that were destined to burn in the fire of hell, Allah frees them, Allah forgives them. So let us take advantage of a Rabb who is Arham al the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most loving, the most caring. And let us try and become those individuals that achieve this la'allakum. تتقون إن دس من فيذن الله تعالى. May this be the best Ramadan that we have. May this be the best Ramadan that we have in our life. May this be the Ramadan that changes us to be closer and more beloved to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. أمين يا رب العالمين. So this مرقام رمضان gives us an an indication that there is some effort that needs to be made. A person may find himself in the month. You can fast in the month of Ramadan, but you will not necessarily engage. In activities of the ibadah in the month of Ramadan, you will be an individual that would have fulfilled the typical aspect of fasting, but you would have been deprived of the spiritual aspect of fasting. The physical part, you would have fasted it. You may have ticked that box, 
but you would have deprived yourself of the spiritual benefit by not involving yourself in the acts of worship. So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies the value of our acts of worship during blessed times, blessed places, and specifically in this month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies our salah specifically. The nafil salah that you perform is given the value of a fard salah. And the fard salah that you perform is given the value of 70 times its like. So for the salat of taraweeh, the brothers that are opting to just pray like four rakat, six rakat, ten rakat, whatever it is that they are praying of the salat of taraweeh, and then they leave the masjid. Alhamdulillah, we thank you for coming to the masjid. Thank you for standing in the masjid, for joining us. But you are depriving yourself. You are depriving yourself of reward. If you only prayed half a salat of taraweeh, you missed out on ten rakat of salah that would have given you the value and the reward of ten fold salah. You deprived yourself. If you only stood for four rakat, you deprived yourself of so many more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. We need to think in terms of akhirah. We need to think in terms of reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. There are many in the ummah, we are weak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us. I was speaking to a friend earlier today, he told me something strange. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us in comfort and he's tested the people of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the deceased and departed ones Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la bighayri hisab. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us in comfort because we are weak. And we would not have been able to pass the test like how they have passed it. So yes, we are weak, we understand this. But what the problem is, is when we choose to stay weak. When we choose to remain a weak Muslim, this is a problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. Like I said, may this be Ramadan, the Ramadan that changes us. The Ramadan that makes us closer to Allah, that makes us better Muslims, that makes us more obedient, that makes us more desirous of akhirah, that makes us more desirous of reward, that makes us... Those servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that love to engage in salah, that love to engage in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that love to engage in the tilawah of Quran, the acts of worship, that we no longer find pleasure and enjoyment in the things which shaitan has sent in the world, and we find pleasure in those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. So yes, time is going. Barakah in time. We can see that the barakah is leaving slowly. A few years ago, Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we would have felt that there was a long period of time we, we had a very productive Ramadan. Today you wake up, you make suhoor, you go to work, you come home, it's already Maghrib. Time just goes. You don't have time for an extra page or two of Quran. You don't have time for dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no barakah in time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us. Amen. So like this, there are certain things that happen in the middle. 10 days of Ramadan, specifically just about the month, I want to touch on some things. But initially, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make i'tikaf, he would stay in the masjid for the first 10 days of Ramadan. And then for some years, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made i'tikaf in the masjid in the middle 10 days. And the reason that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did this was in search of Laylatul Qadr. This happened for some time until the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the wahi that the Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. So the significance of this middle 10 days is firstly that Rasulullah for an extended period of time made the i'tikaf. There are some people that make the i'tikaf for the entire month of Ramadan, they stay in the masjid and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their sacrifice, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their love and their devotion. It's not easy. But like this, if you are able to perform the i'tikaf, Prepare yourself from now. Some masajid have like a register, you have to apply, you have to put your name on the list if they have space. Then, but in your respective areas where you go, try and make this intention. If you have some extra days that you can take off in the year, maybe you can't sit for the full 10 days. But make the intention at least and sit for nothing. Take out two or three days of your leave if you can, if you have that, uh, that luxury, that opportunity, and sit for those three days in the masjid, just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just you and your Rabb, you've spent so much time giving the haq to everything else. The haq to your dunya, the haq to your children, the haq to your wife, the haq to your family, your friends, your neighbors, whoever. 
But take out this time and give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Devote it to Allah. Switch your phone on flight mode. Tell everybody on your status for the week before that that I'm not going to be available from this day to this day. If you need me, get hold of me before or after. This is the time that I'm devoting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With many plan. I don't want a message. I don't want a WhatsApp. I don't want a phone call. I don't want a nothing. Not an email. Nooks. It's just me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. Let us devote our time. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah make it easy for us. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Something else very significant that happened on the 11th of Ramadan was that the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khadija radiallahu anha, passed away on this day. This was a very, very a heartbreaking moment in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was a pillar of strength and an extremely great support for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, you know, as a wife, as a, as a believing woman, the first believing woman the first believer after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Khadija radiallahu anha. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. And like this, she financially supported the deen and financially contributed to the, the, this, this, the, the deen of Islam and, the, and the, the spread and the growth of Islam. Khadija radiallahu anha was a wife. Unlike any of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would always speak about her in fond terms. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our women like Khadija radiallahu anha. May Allah make our daughters like Khadija radiallahu anha. But she passed away on the 11th of Ramadan. On the 17th of Ramadan was the day that the battle of Badr took place. And inshallah the Mashaykh will speak about it. I suppose in, in, in next week we have a guest speaker, I believe. But uh, they will speak about it inshallah closer to the time. On the 17th of Ramadan the battle of Badr took place. An extremely decisive incident in the history of Islam. Yawm al furqan And as such, there are many, many things about the occasion of Badr that is auspicious, that is special. And many of the mashayikh opine that there are special barakat. And there are special, you know, uh, secrets, so to speak, uh, more in the, in the Sufi term, for those that are inclined in that, in, in that way. But there are spiritual benefits to be attained on that night. Many of the scholars in their experience have achieved certain ranks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have derived certain spiritual benefits on that night and every night of Ramadan for that matter by spending that time in ibadah and speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pouring their heart out to Allah, connecting with Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engaging in worship and prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us the tawfiq inshallah to spend these nights in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to check ourselves at this particular point. As we said, one third of the month is gone. We ask ourselves, where are we? We said we were going to do X amount. I said to myself this Ramadan, we're going to do four khatams or five khatams. Some people say that's amazing. How can you even achieve something? Where do you get the time? Say, okay, let's make it less. I'm going to make one khatam, maybe one and a half khatam, two khatams of Quran, but something I'm going to do. I have a friend who's in corporate. Some people don't have time in the corporate field, they work late, even in Ramadan. May Allah make it easy for the brothers and the sisters. But he said to me, if there's one thing that I'm going to try and do this Ramadan, maybe I'm not going to be able to perform the whole Taraweeh because by that time my brain is not functioning and I'm super tired and I need to sleep and I need to get to work the next day, etc. But one thing that I'm not going to let slide or let pass this Ramadan for myself, a milestone that I need to achieve, I'm not going to recite anything less than one juice of Quran a day. Even if I don't do anything else for the month, but I'm going to do this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We never know what action it is that we do, the sincerity that we do it with, the passion that we do it with. We never know which action of ours is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts and is the one that will take us to Jannah. So let us understand this. Maybe you can't do everything else. But there is one thing that you can do. So if you can do that one thing, do it properly. Do it well. Do it with sincerity. Do it with passion. Do it with love. Do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep it between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a treasure for the day of Qiyamah. Forget about it even so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can surprise you with it on the day of Qiyamah and say, this is your ticket to Jannah. You forgot about it, but I don't forget. Allah does not forget. So like this, what have I achieved? Maybe I sit out, you know, maybe I had a, like a 
some, some goals that I wrote down, I'm gonna achieve this, I'm gonna do so much dhikr every day, I'm gonna do X amount of la ilaha illallah, I'm gonna do so much istighfar, I'm, I'm gonna read half a juice of Quran, maybe one juice, three juice, however many ajaza I can manage. I'm gonna read so much nafil salah, I'm gonna get up with the hajjud, I'm gonna do how many of those things that we actually achieve? Maybe we need to reassess with the time that we have, let's see how we can capitalize. Maybe I can't perform 10 rakat or 8 rakat of salat of tahajjud because for some reason I'm so fatigued and drained from the fasting that when I wake up, I wake up later. I oversleep maybe half an hour. So the time that I wanted to spend in ibadah, I can't because now I've got to do the suhoor and get to the masjid. I can't fit everything into that time. So cut it shorter. If you don't have the time, you don't have to read long rakat of salat. Suffice on the followed aspects of that salah, it's nothing. And at least get a valid salah in. So in three or four minutes, maybe you can do four rakat of tahajjud and you still have 20 odd minutes for suhoor, which I believe is, is inshallah sufficient for us to eat something and drink something before we can make our way to the masjid for the salat al fajr. So, like this, let us reassess what we want to achieve and see how we can accommodate these things for ourselves to still get that spiritual sustenance from this month so that we can feed our ruh and get this la'allakum tattaqoon bi ibnillahi ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq I just want to give us some encouragement for some this may not necessarily be very encouraging but I would just like to mention you know we've heard I'm sure from many people that have spoken about Imam Shafi'i rahmallahu ta'ala about how he used to make 60 khatams of Quran in the month of Ramadan these are for the hufad the Hufad of Quran, if your Quran is solid, mashallah, may Allah make all the Hufad, may Allah bless them. Amen. And those that are not happy with Quran, make the intention. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you also. Let us all make an effort to at least memorize some portion of the Quran. But for those people who have that, uh, you know, uh, grip over their Quran, recite as much as you can. Imam Shafi'i wouldn't recite these 60 khatams in Salah. They would recite the khatam in Salat al Taraweeh, yes. And the rest of the time they would sit with the Mus'haf and recite. Some of the scholars, they would leave every single other form of worship. They wouldn't make dhikr in the month of Ramadan. They wouldn't make extra nafi salah. They wouldn't leave everything else and only sit with the Mus'haf. It's the month of Quran. Others would stand in salah and make khatam after khatam in the salah. So everybody had a different thing. Wherever your enjoyment lies, Engage in those things for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but make sure that you include the Quran al Kareem in your ibadah, insha'Allah. This is the month in which Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam would come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam at night and they would recite the Quran to each other. So from this, the ulama say that there is virtue and there is a preference given to reciting Quran at night because a person is generally more free in the evening, you're not working. You don't have other responsibilities, you have that little bit of freedom where you can sit and you can engage in the tilawah of Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. I want to end with something here. And uh, there is a hadith that is mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, the authentic hadith. And it's a hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he narrates from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, الصيام والقيام يشفى عن للعبد يوم القيام that your fasting and your standing in salah obviously reciting the Quran in salah is going to be an intercessor for you on the day of Qiyam your fasting and the way that you fast is going to intercede for you on the day of Qiyam and your tilawat of Quran whether it is outside of, the, of salah and yes specifically in salah is going to Intercede for you on the day of Qiyamah. The fasting will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ay Rabb, Oh Allah, Mana'atuhu al-ta'ama wa al-sharaab bin nahar That I prevented him from eating and drinking during the day. Wa yaqoolu qiyam And the standing in ibadah will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, Mana'atuhu al-nawma bin layl I prevented him from sleeping at night. He used to stand up in tahajjud. He used to stand up in Salatul Taraweeh and he prayed and he recited the Quran. So accept my intercession on behalf of the slave of yours. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow them to intercede for you. So now it's mentioned under this hadith, the scholars mentioned. This is for the one. 
this reward or this benefit of having these acts of worship intercede for your benefit on the day of Qiyamah is for those individuals that allowed these acts of worship to prevent them from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may have done all of the acts of worship, but you did not stop sinning. You found yourself making zina in the month of Ramadan. May Allah save us. May Allah protect us. You found yourself engaging in other acts of haram in the month of Ramadan. A business deal came up, like Imam Sam says, a khalaq. But the khalaq was haram. You knew it was stolen, but you still sold it. And you made a very healthy profit in the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us halal sustenance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to abstain from the prohibitions. All of them. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. So this individual whose act of worship assisted him in gaining this la'allakum tattaqoon and he brought himself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through them, he will get this reward. But for the one that did not, it would be said to this individual just like how it is said with regards to our salah, when you make a slap dash salah, you don't do it properly, you didn't make your wudu properly, you come into the masjid, you're thinking of everything else, but you're up and down here in the masjid and you run out. The salah says to this person, Allah. May Allah destroy you, like how you have destroyed me. There was no khushu in your salah, no peace in your salah, no adal i'tidal in your arkan. You did not pause in your, in your, in your rukun. You've destroyed your salah. May Allah destroy you. So the psalm and the ibadah will say to this person, May Allah destroy you as you have destroyed me. May Allah save us. I'm mentioning this so that we can give perspective to what we are trying to achieve. It's not just staying hungry and staying thirsty and coming to the masjid and you fast asleep there in the salah. This is not what it's about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. We need to have focus in our ibadah. The psalm is for your eyes. Your, your eyes have to fast from haram. Your ears also have to fast from haram. If the people are fitnaying at work or wherever they are, even if the wife, may Allah give us tawfiq and save us, but if they are about the neighbor and the sister-in-law and this one and the mother-in-law, you can't be in that space. Walk out. Tell them, I'm not prepared to engage in this discussion. You are destroying my fast. I have to answer for this on the day of Qiyamah. My ears are going to testify against me because I listen. So we need to develop this consciousness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and tawfiq. It took a few minutes extra. May Allah give us tawfiq, inshallah. We still have time, brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability, inshallah, to maximize whatever is left of this month. If you haven't achieved what you want to, readjust your goals and make an effort to achieve them. For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi um, the CT, Cape Town Islamic Educational Center in Eagle Park, they will be putting these pamphlets to collect funds and so forth on, in your car. They've asked permission from it, so I said yes. Let us make dua for Sister Maryam Ali, the daughter of Ta Muhammad Ali. She's going for an operation, she's only 21 years old, Allah will make it easy for her. So she finds all those that are sick. Oh Allah, surround them, Shifa. Our dear departed ones, oh Allah, surround them, Jannah, to fulfill their Amen. Your fitra, and please, uh, 50 and 25 rand, 50, 50 is the, the fitra, 25 is the fidya, something 77. The more the merrier, please, let the, let the poor benefit. You have, you have different schools of thought and things like that. So do what you can, the best for the poor, please. Uh, those who can't afford, stick to the minimum, no problem. The other people, especially when you put your fitra and fidya into our mosque account, please don't put it two days and one day before the, uh, the Eid fitra. It's impossible for us to look at it, take it out and make do justice. I've seen already fitra coming through on the day of Eid. <coughs> we take it as sadaqa, khalas. So please, do it now. I don't know why the people leave it for last minute. So please, and we also appreciate greatly uh, every month, whenever you, you do your EFTs into the masjid account, Allah bless it with many fold for you, Ya Allah. And please look, look at our running expenses of this masjid. We would appreciate it if you 
keep on doing it, whether it's EFT or whether you give me your cash. Thank you so much. Allah bless you for all that. Amen.